गुड इवनिंग सर 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 गुड इवनिंग यस गुड इवनिंग सर गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग सर गुड इवनिंग सर गुड इवनिंग Is my network all right? Net uh, audio, video, everything. Yes. Fine. Perfect. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Fast. All right. So revision, right? We are going to do revision today. Yes, sir. Then, sir, revision on the mark. Okay. First, we should remember, yes or no? Huh? Remember? Mahadi, whatever we have thought, you remember or not? Yeah. If you have, <clears throat> okay. Trust me. Now, uh, if you have followed everything that I have said, right? Making a list of all the important adjustments, solving all the study material problems simultaneously, doing all the homework problems. Writing down the theory, caps theory material as and when I complete the theory. इधर ना मारता इधर है, right? So say material chapter. We did when? Which month we did material? Long back? Yes. Uh, I think in March. It should be in month of March or April, right? That is when we did material chapter. So by now you would have, you know, uh, forgot. Is what you will think? Yes. You feel like you've forgotten, but trust me, at the end of after this. You all will realize that it is not forgotten. It is there. Only thing is you have to recall. So let us recall now. Okay. But like I said, provided you have done everything that I have told. Yes. That is a big question mark. Yes or no? Huh? All right. Let's start. Material. Right. Material chapter. We started off with material, so I'll go in the same flow as I have been doing the classes. All right. Material. Material we have learned right direct material indirect material yes all the three different types then you've earned uh, learned the classification of cost also right that is material labor and expenses yes material labor and expenses and not overheads yes so you have got direct material indirect uh, indirect material direct labor indirect material um, and direct overheads I am sorry uh, what is the direct expenses and indirect expenses. The sum of all indirect material, indirect labor, and indirect expenses is my overhead. 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 All right. So with that, let's start. Material control, right? What is material control? It is the function of ensuring that. To I have split the definition in two parts. If you remember, it is the function of ensuring that sufficient goods are retained in stock to meet all requirements without carrying. Unnecessarily large stock. Excellent, Ramya. Yes, without carrying unnecessarily large stock. This is my material control. With this only, I had given link to the objectives. Yes. So first part of the definition, what did it say? Sufficient goods are retained in stock to meet all requirements. So this I had linked it to saying that there should be no understocking. Yes or no? If sufficient goods are retained in stock. i am ensuring that there is no understocking and my production process is not hampered right but at the same time without carrying unnecessarily large stock this will link it to what saying that there should be no overstocking understocking so that there is no production process is not hampered overstocking why because it shouldn't have an under, increase unnecessarily my inventory cost correct yes or no right this is what we learned this is material Control and objectives of material control. Again, we have other objectives which are uh, you know incidental to this, but these are the two major important objectives of material control. Clear? All right. Next, next we learn the fixation of stock levels. Yes or no? Fixation of stock levels. First of all, when I mean stock level, when I say stock level, what do I mean? Anyone? ROQ. No, ROQ are different. What do I say? That is one of the um, <clears throat> reorder quantity and all of. Not that. When I see stock level, 
what i mean is the quantity of okay stock, 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 stock. In, in warehouse okay. or factory yes or no the quantity of my stock whether in warehouse factory or whatever but the quantity of stock that i have right so when i see stock level it means the quantity of stock in the warehouse or factory and not the quantity of goods that i'm going to order right so that is why roq formula is different yes that will come later now we are only talking about fixation of stock levels clear yes all right so i had given a clear chart is yes? remember one neat chart i had given so if, if you remember the chart you will remember all the formulas okay let's revise that now the same way i will do it same way i will revise the whole thing okay so i said that stock level is equals to quantity of stock in warehouse or factory yes all right with that we learn two important terminology or two important abbreviations yes we learn the abbreviation what c and p correct remember c and p what do i mean by c anyone consumption, consumption rate. rate consumption rate it's the rate at which it is the rate at which units of raw materials are consumed whether per day per week etc we'll see later yes per day per week later per month that doesn't matter but what is important is it is the rate at which the units of raw materials are consume that is my c then p what is p reorder reorder period reorder period correct reorder period that is period required for the goods to arrive right once the order is placed right today i order the goods it might come after 3 days 4 days or 5 days the period of days or the number of days it requires for the goods to arrive at my factory or warehouse once the order is placed i call it as my reorder period all the formulas of fixation of stock level is dependent or based on this c into p clear therefore when i say c into p what do i mean it is the <coughs> requirement of material to cover the reorder period yes so i need to ensure at least that much i should have yes or no if i don't have c into p right then how will i function because today i have placed the order if it doesn't come right so till the date or till the time the goods arrive at my factory i need to have c into p that is consumption into reorder period that much amount of quantity of goods should be there with me that is that is why i say it is the material requirement material required to cover the reorder period clear that is my c into p right so uh, again now c and p we have three different levels right that is minimum average and maximum minimum average and maximum same goes with my period clear same goes with my period that is minimum period average period and maximum period clear all right so now first one we started off with what reorder level yes first is my reorder level what is the formula for reorder level maximum 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 p into maximum p why because we go with the conservative approach right maximum consumption into maximum period let me have in my stock so that at no given point of time i go out of stock again one of the objectives of material control so maximum c into maximum p next so reorder level next we have maximum level maximum level is something more than reorder level yes or no correct so we start off with reorder level so reorder level plus something correct reorder yes, level reorder quantity plus something. what is the plus something it is the reorder quantity why because i have placed the order for reorder quantity yes or no that is why now we should understand the difference between reorder quantity and reorder level wherein reorder quantity is the number of units ordered per order with the supplier right number of units ordered per order with the supplier and reorder level at reorder level you place reorder quantity correct at reorder level you place the order which is reorder quantity clear yes all right now what is the formula now roi roi plus roq minus average average c into rhp minimum c into min p maximum alla 
maximum in the if you remember what did i gave you the connection to remember from maximum let me remove minimum yes so that the value is high ha, as high as possible correct since i am arriving at maximum level i need to ensure that the value is as high as possible to ensure the value is as high as possible what will i do i will reduce minimum clear artha aita that logic you should remember so the formula is rol plus roq rol plus roq minus minimum c into minimum p clear yes so next i have minimum level minimum level is something less than rol yes something less than rol here what i do rol minus yes now you tell me average c into average, 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 average p clear so here you have average c into average p next you have danger level danger level is average c or minimum c if you remember there were two schools of thought says average c or minimum c into lead time for emergency purchase into lead time for emergency purchase clear then you have average stock level average level here again simple minimum plus maximum by 2 or the second formula is or the second formula is yes minimum, minimum plus minimum half of r o q yes minimum R2. level plus half of r o q excellent excellent happy that you guys remember minimum level plus half of r o q clear yes right reorder period is also known as lead time yes emergency lead time i told correct reorder period is also known as lead time all right all right so now end what we end with what the relationship maximum level is more than reorder level reorder level is more than minimum level minimum level is more than danger level right if you remember all of these things 100% you can recall everything yes let's summarize everything yes first one reorder level is maximum 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 c, maximum c, maximum c into maximum, maximum p yes maximum c into maximum p next Re uh, maximum level R O L plus R O Q minus minimum C plus minimum P. R O L plus R very simple to remember. Some of them are still not you know getting the hold of it. Very simple. R O L you start with R O L first, okay? R O L के यहाँ वो तो maximum to maximum because conservative approaches. I will explain you the logic of what is C into P. So R O L is maximum into maximum. Next maximum level is something more than R O L. So R O L you will add R O Q because R O Q gets added to your stock, right? But you have to minus something because during that C into P period something gets consumed. What gets consumed is minimum so that the maximum value is retained, right? So maximum level is R O L plus R O Q minus minimum C into minimum P. Yes. Next minimum level is something less than R O L. R O L minus Average C into average P. Excellent. Average C into average P. And danger level is danger level. Average C or minimum P into lead time for emergency purchase. Excellent. Average level is is fast. Minimum level plus maximum level divided by minimum plus maximum by two. Or minimum level minimum level plus half R Q. Half R Q. Minimum plus half of R O Q. All right. All right. Yes. Next E O Q formula. What is the E O Q formula? What is economic order quantity? Root of two A B by C. Root of two A B by C. Square root of two A B by C. Wherein A is what? Annual demand. Annual demand. Yes. Annual demand or requirement. B is. Buying cost or order. Buying cost or order. Buying cost or order. Cost per unit. Cost per order. C is. Carrying cost per unit. So, our economic order quantity formula is. I asked, what is EOQ? You gave me the formula. Let me say the formula. EOQ is equal to square root of two AB by C, where A is the annual demand or requirement, B is the buying cost or ordering cost per order, and C is the carrying cost per unit per annum. Yes. But what is EOQ? It is that level of quantity. Yes. Now tell me, what is EOQ? Where uh, ordering cost and carrying yes. cost is minimum. Yes. Where the cost of ordering cost and carrying cost is. Minimum and uh, ordering cost is equals to carrying cost. If you guys remember, yes. At EOQ, my ordering cost is equals to carrying cost. Clear? Yes. Next. We also learn certain inventory controls. Yes or no? We learn certain inventory controls. What are the inventory controls we learn? First one, ABC analysis. ABC that is seventy twenty ten analysis. Clear? Remember? 
70, 20, 10 analysis wherein you had different categories. Category A, Category B and Category C. Yes, Category A, Category B and Category C. 70, 20, 10 analysis. According to this or according to ABC analysis, what does it say? 70% of the value will hold only 10% of the quantity. Yes. 70% of value will hold only 10% of the quantity. Therefore, you give 70% of importance to this category and this category is A category. Yes, A category of inventory has 70% of value but only 10% in quantity. Therefore, you give 70% importance to it. In my example, I had given automobile industry example if you guys remember. Right, automobile industry example category A would be my engines if you remember. Yes, if you guys can recall and appreciate. Next, B. B is 20% of value and 20% of quantity. Therefore, you give 20% importance to this level of or this category of uh, inventory. And the example we had given was tires, right? Example we had given in the automobile industry was tires. And last but not the least, category C, it has only 10% of the uh, you know value, but 70% in quantity. 10% of value, but 70% quantity. And example we had given was spare parts, right? That is, you know, nut, bolt, screws, etc. Yes, all of you understood. This is my ABC analysis. And if you remember, we solved a question on this as well. Right. And I told you, and I told, and I told you guys that you don't have to be exactly at 70, 20, and 10, but somewhere nearby. Yes. So that problem you guys go through after this so that your concept is clear. I won't be solving the ABC problem today. It's quite easy. Concepts you need to understand, but solve it. Clear. Next, FSN. Right. First one was ABC. Next is FSN. That is fast moving, slow moving and non moving. All this was based on movement of goods. Yes. What is the keyword we told for FSN? Anyone? Frequency. Frequency. Excellent. Aditi. Yes. Frequency. So first one was ABC and the keyword there was total value. Why did I say total? Anyone? Why did I stress on the word total for ABC? Because of it should not get, you should not get confused with one more category, HSN. HSN is what? HSL. Uh, why? HM, sorry, HML, that is high cost, medium cost and low cost is on per unit. Yes, we do the distinction based on per unit. Therefore, very important, ABC is always on total value, clear? Right, I'll come to HML later. First one is ABC is total value, that was the keyword. Next is? We are uh, fast moving, slow moving and non moving that is FSN and here the keyword is frequency you remember, right? So frequency, all right, next. Fast moving, what did I say? It is a conversion of raw material to finished goods, right? Here what happens, raw material gets converted to finished goods at a very fast cycle, right? And replenishment or replenishment of inventory is very fast, right? So the turnover, inventory turnover ratio, I swear, yeah, inventory turnover ratio is very fast, yes? Inventory turnover first. Next. Mean slow moving. That is here the conversion of raw material to finished goods. It is slow and replacement of frequency is also slow. What is the uh, you know example I had given you guys? Remember for uh, fast moving, slow moving, and non -moving, non moving. Anyone recalls? Yes. Stop. Chemist shop. Yes, excellent. I had given chemist shop example. So if you remember, fast moving. So all this Dolo 65 and all of this is very fast moving. Yes, every day somebody the work, uh, the person comes and procure these medicines. He'll keep it very close to him. Some things are just slow moving, right? Slow moving. But movement is there, but little slow. That will keep him a little far. Whereas non moving, that is very rare, extremely rare moving. He'll keep it very far, stored very, very far away from him. Yes, this is the example at given. Next, next we have vital, essential, and desirable. What? Vital, essential, and desirable. That is V E D. What is the keyword here? Importance. Importance. Criticality or importance. Excellent, Chandan. Criticality or importance for production of final product. Yes. So here, why vital? What does it mean? If vital, these goods are not there, means my entire production process is interrupted. Yes. It interrupts my entire production process. That is why it is very important, vital, and therefore attention we give is extremely high to this vital category of inventory. Next, I had essential, right? This is what happens is even if this is not there, I can have the product, but it will be substandardized, right? If essential level of uh, I mean, category of goods are not there, also I I can finish the product, but it will be substandard level. Yes? So there is substandardization. Next, you have desirable. 
right desirable is like something like a cherry on the ice cake right so you have an ice cake you have a cherry right that is desirable but cherry is not there also ice cake is there right yes or no that is the importance of this so no production or efficiency loss right there is no production or efficiency loss that happens but however it is that is why the word uses desirable that is why the word uses desirable and importance you give little importance to this this level of thing. so we had this is the third category that is ved abc analysis fast moving slow moving non moving fsn ved vital essential and desirable next you have H, hml that is high cost medium cost and low cost high cost medium cost and low cost inventory difference between abc and hml is abc is on total value hml is per unit cost clear all of you understood yes and last we also had learned about just in time yes it's a japanese techno uh, technology or technique wherein inventory management is based on ordering the goods only when it is required right that is the goods arrive only at the uh, time of production clear so inventory management is very least inventory you manage here right so the inventory cost that is cost of carrying cost is least that is my just just in time technology all right so next concept yes so my pace is fine all of you all right yes, landed cost right we had also learned about what is landed cost anyone what do you think what do you remember landed cost is hmm? it is the per unit cost if you remember i had always told you that landed cost is always expressed in terms of per unit right so landed cost the cost of raw material which is expressed per unit in order to ascertain the price at which it should be issued to production right simple what is the cost cost of a material right we find out no what is the per unit cost of the material that itself is the landed cost right landed cost right at what cost it has come come to my uh factory or warehouse in what should be included what should not be included i told you guys i've given a list Right, I've given a list of what are the things that should be included in this. What are the things things that should be excluded? We'll discuss that also. Don't worry. I'll give you certain. I'll recall the examples. Let's revise the examples also because I think that this concept nobody remembers. Okay, so landed cost is it is the refers to the cost of raw material. Yes, cost of raw material which is expressed per unit. Very important. I told you guys even the examination. I told even if they do not tell you to express per unit, you always express per unit. Okay, landed cost refers to the cost of raw material which is expressed per unit in order to ascertain the price at which it is issued to production. Price at which it is issued to production. Yes. What does it include and what does it exclude? Okay. First, let us understand what does it contain. So it includes purchase price is included. Yes. All of you. Purchase price included. How about transportation cost included or excluded? Included. Yes. Included. How about cost of packaging? Included. Included. Import duty? Included. Right. And uh, cost of containers? Not included. Based on whether deposited or not. Ah, excellent. Whether refundable or non-refundable, you will decide whether it is included or not. Cost of non-refundable containers will be added to the cost. Cost of refundable containers will not be included in the cost. Yes. What will be excluded? GST. GST input credit. Ah, again, depending on whether input is available or not. If nothing is given in the question, you give a note saying that you assume that input is available and do not consider it as part of cost because normally input is available. However, if it is given in the question that input is not available, you will add it to cost. Yes. All of you, clear? All right. So these are certain things we learned with respect to landed cost. Okay. Now let's go through problem. RTP May twenty two. I think we solved. I had actually solved. So I'll be going through all the RTP problems this time. Okay. But uh, I think this RTP problem, especially at solved in the class also. Uh, don't worry angan thana ivak solve madal anta helta la it solve it again okay rtp problems yeah yes want to read this problem 
I and co and unregistered supplier under GST purchased material from VYE Limited, which is registered under GST. The following information is available for one lot of 5,000 units of materials purchased. Listed price of one lot rupees 250,000. Trade discount at 10% on listed price. CGST and SGST. Credit not available. 12% 6% CGST. 6% SGST. Cash discount at 10% will be given only if payment is made within 30 days. Toll tax paid rupees 5,000. Flight and insurance rupees 17,000. Demarrage paid to transporter rupees 5,000. Commission and brokerage on purchases rupees 10,000. Amount deposited for refundable containers rupees 30,000. Amount to amount of refund on returning container rupees 20,000. Other expenses at 2% of total cost. 20% material shortage is due to normal reasons. The payment to the supplier was made within 21 days of the purchases. You are required to calculate cost per unit of material purchased by Sky and Co. Okay, You're required to calculate the cost. Okay, now let's say, uh, now you tell me what are the things I should include, what are the things I should exclude to arrive at the landed cost. That is what it is basically asking. Okay, yes. Listed price of one lot is rupees 2,50,000. Yes. Will this be part of the cost? Yes or no? Yes, yes, sir. yes sir. Trade discount at 10% on listed price. Yes. Should I reduce this or not? Reduce. Reduce. Trade discount we always reduce. Next. CGST and SGST credit not available 12%. Will this be included? Yes, yes, sir. Sir. yes sir. Cash discount at 10%. Will no, be given no. only. Should I read further or not? Not required because cash discount will. Ex be excluded. Will be excluded. Why? It's a financial financial charge. nature and that is not include considered in costing. Yeah. Yes. So that will not be considered cash discount. Next. Toll tax paid of rupees 5000. Will I take it? Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir. Demarage, uh, sorry. Freight and insurance? Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir. Demarage paid to transporter. Anyone yes, remember sir. what demarage is? It is, but what is demarage? Um, Late fees, late in uh, or stock to, uh, for loading and loading for anything. For it's a penalty, yes or no? It is a penalty that is paid for delay in the loading and unloading charges. I discussed this in my class, yes. So, whatever, if you don't remember what it is, also, but at least demarrage is penalty, and then you should remember, okay? Otherwise, you cannot solve this problem. Demarrage is penalty, that is why it is abnormal in nature, clear? Abnormal. So, anything that is abnormal in nature, will I add or not? No, no sir. No, sir. So what will I do? What will be the treatment of that? P and account. Costing. 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 account. Yes. Next. Commission and brokerage on purchases. Yes, sir. Yes. yes sir. Amount deposited for refund uh, returnable containers. Amount not refundable is included. Yes. So that is amount deposited minus amount of refund. The balance will be correct. So this has both here. All right. Amount deposited. So first we have deposited uh, 30,000, but only 20,000 is refunded. Therefore, 10,000 are added to my cost. Yes. All of you are understanding. Yes, sir. Is that two percent of total cost? What will I do here? Ninety-eight percent of the total. Cost. Excellent. Yes. So we others all everything else is ninety-eight percent of the cost. So divide it by ninety-eight percent and multiply into two percent. That is the two percent total cost. All of you understood? Yes. Twenty percent of material shortage is due to normal reasons. What will I do here? Twenty percent of material uh, shortage. Uh, is due. Yes. Do nothing. Do. Nothing. Let's reduce the units. Ah, reduce. You're doing something, Rahul. You're not doing nothing. You're not going to add the cost because cost is nothing here. But yes, reduce the units. So 5,000 units, you will reduce it by normal shortage, 20%. 1,000 will reduce and then divide by 4,000 and find out my inflated wage. So you have inflated wage rate here. Same way you have inflated material cost that you find out per unit here. Yes, all of you understood? All right. Yes, Same thing is given here. Okay. So if you see here, yes, listed price of materials they are given two lakh fifty thousand. Yes, all of you agree. Less ten percent trade discount here. Very important. CGST and SGST is on the discounted price. All of you agree? Huh? And yes. one more important thing is always show the breakup. Okay. Always show the breakup of CGST and SGST. Do not show at twelve percent GST. Okay. Because CGST and SGST normally in practice also have you seen invoices? Restaurant invoice on the A no the restaurant invoice on the node no Yes. All sir. of you could have definitely seen a restaurant invoice. In that you have seen no CGST is separate, SGST is separate. Same way here also. Whenever and if the question does not give you the breakup, then don't break your head and do it. 
then you put it as 12 percent no problem but if question is giving you the breakup then please disclose it separately okay next toll tax they are adding to it yes or no their toll tax and freight and insurance commission so here if you see cost of refund returnable uh, containers 30000 minus 20000 10000 rupees they have uh, added it to the cost total cost is 294000 they have divided by 98 into 2 because 2% of the total cost is other expenses 6000 3 lakh here rahul what did i do i have reducing 1000 units find out what is fourth of uh, for 4000 units divided by 3 uh, 3 lakh divided by 4000 75 is the cost per unit what are the working notes they have given? GST is payable on net price, that is listed price, list discount. Cash discount, why? What is the treatment? It is finance charges. Yes. Demarrage is penalty, therefore, I will take it to costing payable account and not be included here. Shortage due to normal reason should not be deducted from the cost to ascertain the total cost of good units. Clear? Yes, sir. Have you understood this problem? Yes. yes Anyone sir. has any doubts? No doubts? All right. Next. Suggested answer, there is a problem. Let me go through that. Very simple. This is your December 21 question paper. See, these kind of questions also come. Lottery questions. Yeah. Yeah, one of you read. So not visible. So. Oh, it's not visible. Sorry. Okay, before uh, I go there, let me just go through the, your theory portion once. Okay, R2E theory, one second. Yeah. This is visible? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. No, all right. One second. Yeah, one of you read. Material cost. Inventory is as good as cash. Example, jewelry. Material control. The function of ensuring that sufficient goods retain in the stock to meet all requirements without carrying unnecessarily large stock. Process involved in material. Material procurement, inspection, storage, issue. Bill of material. It is a document containing the detailed description and specification for manufacturing a product. Stores record, bin card, stock control card maintained by storekeeper, stores ledger maintained by costing department. Factory normal shortage is treated as an indirect expense. Abnormal shortage is debited to cost costing. Fixation yeah. of stock levels, EOQ, etc. formula. Yeah, this uh, at these formulas you can go through what is important is whatever i've discussed i will not go through this formula is important right safety stock plus lead time consumption one of the problems i've done this okay reorder level one another formula important for you guys to remember is safety stock plus lead time consumption clear yes that is one next uh, you read from here economic order quantity on what you read yes economic order quantity is equals to square root of two in the brackets, 2 into annual consumption into buying cost per order divided by cost per unit into storage and carrying cost rate. Inventory turnover ratio is equal to materials consumed divided by average inventory. Inventory turnover period is equal to 365 days divided by inventory turnover ratio. Safety stock is equal to in the brackets, annual demand divided by 365 into maximum lead time minus normal divided by average lead time. No, uh -huh, that's not divided. Normal or average lead time. Okay. Normal or average lead time. Total inventory cost is equal to ordering cost plus carrying cost of inventory plus purchase cost. Note, for calculation of total inventory cost, average inventory should be taken as half of carrying cost is normally given as percentage of per unit. Okay. Yes. Yeah. These things also we did. So you can read this also. ABC. Always better control analysis. 70-20-10 analysis. ABC analysis. It is a system of inventory control. It exercises discriminating control over different items of stores classified on the basis of invest investment involved. 
items are classified into following categories. A category, quantity less than 10%, but value more than 70%. B category, quantity less than 20%, but value about 20%. C category, quantity about 70%, but value less than 10%. Control ratios. Input minus output ratio. Input output ratio. Input output ratio, also known as yield ratio, which is equal to output divided by input into 100. Example, two meter cloth, one shirt yield ratio equals to 50%. One cane, five glass, five glasses of juice yield ratio is equal to 500%. The converse of yield ratio represents material loss. Method of pricing. Ah, stop there. Stop there. Okay. So now, yield. what is yield ratio? Very simple. Output by input into 100. And converse of yield ratio is my material loss. Yes or no? So because one uh, cloth. So what is it? Then? Two meters of cloth I've give, put in. And I've got one uh, shirt. And then one cane gives me five glasses of juice. Yes. This is my yield ratio. All right. Next. Yeah. Here, this is important. No inventory turnover ratio. Inventory turnover ratio. What is the inventory turnover ratio? Material consumed by average inventory. What do I mean by inventory turnover ratio? Number of times the inventory has turned around. Yes or no? Number of times the inventory at the, is has turned around. I call it in my inventory turnover ratio. Clear? Yes. Now the same thing. 365 days when I divide it by inventory turnover ratio, I get my inventory turnover period. Yes or no? That is once in how many days is the inventory cycle getting completed? Yes. So inventory turnover ratio is number of times in the entire year inventory has turned around. Inventory turnover period is number of days, right? Or number of months. Once in how many days or once in how many months the inventory is turned around. So inventory turnover ratio, I repeat again, is material consumed divided by average inventory. Material turnover ratio is what? Material consumed divided by average inventory and inventory in uh, inventory turnover period is 365 days divided by inventory turnover ratio clear all of you yes all right so based on this only one problem is there let's solve that Yeah. Can you guys see this? Yes. All right. Yes, Read the problem. XYZ Limited uses two types of raw materials, material A and material B in the production process and has provided the following data for the year ended 31st of March 2021. Particulars, material A, material B, opening stock as on 1st of April 2020, purchases during the year, closing stock as on 31st March 2021. First one, you are required to calculate A, the inventory turnover ratio of material A and material B, B, the number of days for which the average inventory is held for both materials A and B. Second one, based on above calculations, give your comments. Assume 360 days in a year. Okay. So very simple, no? What is there? Nothing. What is the formula I told? No, first one they are asking is inventory turnover ratio. What is the formula for inventory turnover ratio? Material consumed. Material consumed divided. Average inventory. Material consumed. Now what should I do? Opening stock plus purchase minus closing stock. Simple. Opening stock plus purchase minus closing stock. I get my material consumed. What is average inventory? Closing, 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 closing by two. Closing by two. By two. Divided, divided. material consumption divided material consumed divided by my average inventory will give me my inventory turnover ratio. Next, the number of days for which the average inventory is there. What is the number of days inventory turnover period ratio? 360 by, 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. by inventory turnover ratio. That's it. They have asked how much? If you do this, how much do you get? Five marks. Okay. You solve this and you get five marks it's within a few minutes, not even like, uh, you know, you like two minutes, three minutes. You can just put the table, tuck, tuck, solve it and score five marks. First problem, first question, this is simple. And this is not some uh, mock test paper or something. This is your December 21 exam suggested answer. Okay. December 2021 suggested answer. This is the problem. So, and the, and people say what costing is tough. What do they say? Costing is tough. So that is why what I say is. 
all all topics right do not skip anything there will be certain things may, that may be complicated i understand some problems like standard costing and all some problems that too after set is restored i don't think anybody should find it difficult but say you find it difficult even then at least the formulas and basic problems you learn because if they give problems like this can't you solve it isn't it a cake walk his yes. anybody can solve this and score 5 on 5 yes under 5 marks can be scored in this out of what we can score andre passing marks alli 5 out of uh, 40 already scored just by this question by so doing solving it for two three marks so like this you will have some you know giveaways in your examination these kind of questions will come no question paper is 100% difficult chance illa it is not possible right one or two questions only will be standard everything else will be so one some piece questions will be easy very easy like this some questions will be on an average difficulty and one or two questions only will be standard a one or two questions are not going to you all will get scared why remaining uh, to, out of 120 marks 20 marks is very difficult although 100 marks is still there no for you to score on 100 on 100 yes 100 percent all of you can do it what you need what is important in costing is completing the paper which most of us have a problem most of the students have go wrong here only that they cannot complete the problem costing and many of them i have so, so many students say sir i could solve only 70 marks sir i could solve only uh, 65 sir i could solve only 80 marks that problem that is where your preparation comes that is where your preparation is important so till now right you have already know how you have studied whatever you have prepared but we are having revision session for the first time for your batch in between the classes only so that you can start from now only you get that push and you start solving now you have to improve your pace guys so all of those guys who have not prepared earlier also properly at least now you wake up you know kumbhakarna karana sleep you have to break now right till now you are sleeping like kumbhakarna now you have to break that sleep get up and at least now you start solving even now if you try start solving 101% trust me all of you can score excellent marks and complete you see being um, our student of caps right being a cap said i can assure you guys 100 marks you solve and come I, no person on earth can fail you guys 100 but provided you write for 100 100 that is no and some intelligent of people you can score 100 and 100 in costing it is possible 1000 percent possible very easy okay all right answer now let's just go through i easy and the heli dini So let's go through and check if the answer is really easy or not. It is hundred percent. Don't worry. Same thing. What we discussed. Yes. So what does it say? Opening stock plus ad purchases. You get one lakh twenty thousand less closing stock. Yes. You get the material consumed. You have given the working note for that, right? Average inventory is opening plus closing divided by two. Average inventory twenty five thousand twenty three thousand. Next inventory turnover ratio. They are given three times and four times. Number of days for which the average inventory held. Number of days in a year. That is I to inventory turnover ratio is three sixty three sixty days. Ah, here. Ah, this is where even though it is simple, I'll cut it there. Three sixty days. So you don't do three sixty five days. The question they give you three sixty days. So three sixty days divided by the inventory turnover ratio, right? So you will get the answer as ninety days and one twenty days. Adikya, then they have given second part of the question is comment. Here I would suggest you give little better comment than this. Okay, what they have given? Material A is moving faster than material B, or material B A has less holding period. And so you can elaborate a little bit more. I feel all right. Material A has less holding period. All right. So you give comparison, more detailed comparison as to what it means, right? You can give material inventory turnover ratio means what, right? Other than interpret money. So for example, for example, inventory turnover ratio means what? Number of times the inventory is turned around. So you can tell that four times inventory. Uh, what is that? Uh, material A inventory has turned around four times, but material B has uh, turned around only three times. And then you can give uh, observation on even this thing, number of days. It is held for 90 days. It is held for 120 days. Why again you give link? Because four times and the it come here. Yes, inventory turnover ratio is higher under a number of times. Your uh, number of days will be shorter. Yes or no? If my inventory turnover ratio is higher, common sense my inventory holding period will be shorter. Yes, because A has four times the 90 days. And these sort of little bit linking you give. That is a caps answer. Got it? That's a caps eight answer, right? This sort of linking you give five on five you will get. And see, even if you write this, maybe he'll give you five marks because suggested answer is saying. And suggested answer is not the answer script which is given to the evaluators, ah, huh? for your kind information. That is not. They have a different valuation set, and that is what the IC always gives a disclaimer. My suggestion is right. If you cannot get, you write so much, no problem. You still get four marks, four and a half or five, whatever. But if you give an answer like this, that to first question, whatever you attempt, no, whether you will attend first question or not, I don't know. But if you give an answer like this, it will take hardly thirty seconds more, right, to give. 
you will impress the evaluator even if you don't score see may maybe you have not written maybe there's a student x and the cap set right cap set gives an answer like this the other student gives normal answer it is as per that he would have got probably say both of you get same marks five on five wins both but what i'm saying is when you give a link like this you will you know impress the evaluator and then he's uh, somewhere you will influence see at the end of the day remember this person who is evaluating is not a machine is a human being right so and remember whenever he is writing you no know, so many question papers he has so many sorry answer papers he has right yours is one among them must be so how you stand out is important and i am talking mainly to those guys who are aiming for a rank okay i am talking mainly to those guys who are aiming for a, even otherwise you can do all of this right but if you are aiming for a rank no this is really important you have to impress the evaluator okay all right so with that i think uh, my material chapter is revision is done okay i have all the concepts concepts everything i have covered right and the rtp uh, your latest rtp and suggested answer i have uh, solved it in the class remaining again, again i don't need not say you have to go through all the problems in the end right we'll have we will have one exhaustive revision class at that time i'll do certain problem oriented that will be more problem oriented this we are keeping more conceptual clear because we're just revising your concepts okay next let us start with employee cost okay yes again here you have direct labor and indirect labor yes employee cost here also you have direct labor and indirect labor all of you here yes all of you with me yes, yes. direct labor and indirect labor here also you have same way like material right but again labor control cost how do you control cost of labor i have given you two points one is increasing the efficiency of the workers yes ramya unmute and speak increasing the efficiency of the workers and second one is optimum wages to workers first is efficiency of the workers and second one is optimum wages to workers and both of them actually if you ask me are correlated yes if you give optimum wages he will be more uh, motivated and he will become more efficient yes both are interlinked if he is more efficient the wages he earns will be higher both are interlinked yes but these are the two ways or one of the two ways important ways in which labor cost can be controlled all of you understood yes all right then we learn certain terminologies yes first one is time keeping what do i mean by time keeping anyone attendance attendance of the work basically time in and time out at what time he entered the factory what time did he go out of the factory that is the attendance right? so time keeping is what recording and keeping of attendance right it records the total time spent by the worker or employees in the factory is or the organization right that is time keeping what is time booking recording the details of the work done and time spent right on each job or process on each job or process so recording this or booking this time keeping whatever time he has spent so say 9 hours he was in the factory or 9 hours 1 hour he did say stitching 2 hours he did cutting the cloth or something or three hours, another 2 hours he say let's say he moved it to uh was movement from one uh, one unit to the other or what right so when you book this time for different processes and job i call this time booking Yes, the difference between timekeeping and time booking is idle time. Idle time. The difference between timekeeping and time booking is my idle time. Therefore, idle time is what? It is the time during which no production takes place. Right? No production is carried out because the workers remain idle, even though he is paid. Right? Even though he is paid, there is no productivity. There is no production taking place. But however, he is paid for that job. Example for idle time would be lunch break. could be a different break or even the movement right when you move from one place to other or movement of factory whatever that could be my last time i told you was carrying the goods from one place to other movement is the in person moving himself right that is not recorded what is recorded is maybe he would have moved certain because his job might be just to move right he might be a carrier or something clear all of you understood yes so time keeping is attendance time booking is booking the time spent for each and every job right that is time booking the difference between time keeping and time booking is my idle time all right next overtime what is overtime is a time worked by worker in excess of 
in excess of my normal working hours whatever i work that is called whatever the worker works is called as overtime yes and he is paid normally at double the normal rate yes and this extra pay uh, you know amount that is paid to him it is called as overtime premium overtime premium the rate paid over the normal rate is called as overtime premium clear these are certain terminologies right time keeping time booking idle time and overtime yes all right so next labor turnover ratios yes what do i mean by labor turnover rate of change of composition of the labor yes rate of change of composition of the labor force during a particular period i call it as labor turnover yes high labor turnover shows instability in the organization yes remember high turnover labor turnover shows instability in the organization and therefore might affect how the functioning of the organization and will affect the profitability indirectly if you remember illustration 15 recently i solved at the last problem right how labor turnover affects the cost clear that is one of the examples all right next what are the different methods of calculating this or formulas to calculate this labor turnover first method is the separations method first method is the separations method where the formula is number of separations divided by my average workers during the period yes number of separations divided by my average workers during the period what do i mean by separations those employees who have left the organization it could be for any reason either due to resignation retrenchment transfer etc could be anything but as long as he has left the organization right i call it separations method number of separations divided by my average number of workers during the period yes next is my replacement method replacement method that is here formula is number of replacement divided by average number of workers during the period what do i mean by replacement replacing those vacant positions created because of those employees who have left the organization right that is replacement next one is my accessions method wherein it is a addition of number of replacements plus number of fresh jobs which means all the inflow into the organizations or all recruitments whether due to fresh job whether due to expansion or new recruitments everything put together right all the recruitments put together when i divided by average number of workers i call it as accessions method right so number of accessions is equals to number of replacements plus number of fresh job or new job recruitments clear that is my accession method and then last but not least flux method flux method it is nothing but combination of my separations and accession so i add number of separations plus number of rt number of separations plus number of accession divided by my average number of workers during the period clear yes all of you understood all right next we learned certain formulas right so what are the uh you know ways to ensure labor cost is controlled at only one is to one is by increasing the efficiency of the workers and second is by paying them optimum wages right so with that because related to that we learned certain bonuses or methods of payment of incentives to workers right hal say premium plan and ro1 plan Pro okay? yeah before that what is the different wage payment and incentive formulas first one straight time rate straight time rate very simple based on the number of hours you have put in i will pay you that is time taken into time rate simple this is my straight time rate yes aditi next straight piece rate what is it straight piece rate that is based on number of physical units i have you have produced if tejaswini has produced 100 units and bhuvanesh has produced 50 units bhuvanesh will be paid for 50 units of product produced tejaswini will be paid for 100 units of product produced tejaswini and bhuvanesh both of them have taken 1 hour or 2 hours only tejaswini has taken 2 hours and bhuvanesh also has taken 2 hours but i'll be paying based on the number of pieces produced this is my piece rate number of pieces into piece rate clear 
therefore yes. because i am already taking into factor the efficiency of the workers yes or no i am taking into factor the efficiency tejaswini has worked for 2 hours bhuvnesh also is worked for 2 hours but tejaswini has produced 100 units bhuvnesh has produced only 50 units i am paying tejaswini twice of what i am paying bhuvnesh yes so i am already taking into factor the efficiency i am already incentivizing her therefore there is no separate incentive scheme here clear but for time rate we have two different incentive schemes yes one is the halse premium plan and second one is the rowan plan and the halse premium plan first one basic formula is what basic formula is earnings plus bonus for both halse or rowan basic formula is earnings plus bonus earnings is what straight time straight time rate yes straight time rate what is that time taken into time rate very simple bonus for this you need to know the theory right what did i say halse premium plan what does it say it says or it um, wants to say um, convey to the employees that let us share the earnings let us share the earnings equally 50% of whatever is said i will retain in the organization 50% i will pay you guys as incentive or bonus yes so therefore the formula is 50% of time saved into time rate that is the bonus formula so therefore the total uh, halse premium formula is time taken into time rate plus 50% of time saved into time rate clear yes row one plan next one is row one plan here first fundamental principle of row one plan what is it is it me it it wants to convey <coughs> that <coughs> the bonus should never be more than the fixed earnings all of you should remember this bonus should never be more than the fixed earnings yes all of you remember that is where it starts so that is why what it says is i will pay you first is uh, this time, uh, straight time rate which is fixed time taken into time rate bonus formula is because it caps at the fixed earnings first i take write down the fixed earnings time taken into time rate yes but in halse premium plan it was 50% sharing here what we do we add certain efficiency percentage that efficiency percentage is time saved divided by time there time allowed time saved divided by time allowed yes all of you understood so the formula here is time taken into time rate plus time saved by time allowed into time taken into time rate if you know the theory first one is what 50% of the earnings is shared so first you write down what the earnings is time saved into time rate then multiply 50% here the cap is the fixed earning so first you write down the fixed earnings that is time taken into time rate you have to multiply with certain percentage that percentage is the efficiency percentage efficiency is time saved by time allowed all of you understood yes let's repeat the formulas first one halse premium plan all of you say what is the halse premium plan for formula Time taken into time rate plus fifty percent of time saved into time rate. Time saved into time rate. Excellent. Next, Rowan premium plan. What is the formula? Time taken into time rate plus fifty percent of time allowed into time taken into time rate. Time taken into time rate. Clear? Yes. Next, I told you certain properties. Yes. With respect to my Halse and Rowan plan, that is the relationship between the Halse and Rowan plan. Yes, let's see how if you guys remember this, right? When time saved is less than fifty percent of time allowed, what is more, Halse or Rowan? Does anyone remember? When time saved is less than fifty percent of time allowed, Halse is lesser than Rowan plan. When time saved is less than fifty percent of time allowed, Halse is lesser than row one plan. When time saved is more than greater than fifty percent of time allowed, Halse is greater than row one plan. Clear? All of you understood? Yes. All right. Next, overtime. Right? Overtime. Here there are different treatments we have learned. Yes. So first one is. If the customer agrees to bear the entire overtime cost, what do we do with the overtime premium? Add it to the uh, cost. Job yes, cost. we add it to that particular job. Yes, we add it to the particular job. Now, very important is we are only talking about treatment of overtime premium. Yes, the normal this thing will continue as it is, right? However, you are recording. That's how you record whether direct labor, indirect labor, etc. Factory overheads, normal, not overheads, or prime cost, etc. That will remain as it is. We are only talking about overtime premium. Yes. So when the customer agrees to bear the cost, we charge it to that particular job. 
yes next when there is a shortfall in production and overtime is worked irregularly whole time is worked irregularly say there is an unexpected development or one more example key example at given was seasonal requirement yes seasonal requirement that is short for in production what do i do now whole time premium is charged to overhead. factory overheads whole time premium is charged to factory overheads when there is short for in production next when it is due to fault of another department very simple Charge, charge it to that department, department whose fault it is. Yes, charge it to the latter department whose fault it is. Next, due to abnormal conditions, costing pay, costing pay, costing pay. Account over time is worked regularly throughout the year as a policy. Then over time premium is treated as part of normal wages or employee cost, and inflated wage rate is used. Yes, I hope you guys can recall. Yes, if it is as a part of the policy and worked regularly throughout the year, then old time premium is treated like normal wages and inflated wage rate is used. All of you understood? Yes. All right. Then, as per Factories Act, we have learned two limits. One is the daily limit and the weekly limit. Yes. What does the Factories Act say? It says the old time premium is paid if the workers work for more than forty eight hours in a week or Work for more than forty-eight hours in a week, or work for more than nine hours a day. Yes. So my daily limit is nine hours, and the weekly limit is forty-eight hours. So as per Factories Act, we said that first you compute forty-eight hours limit, then you compute nine hours limit. Whichever is higher will be my overtime hours, and overtime hours you multiply it into whatever the rate they have given. Right? What is the overtime premium rate? That is into two or one point five times, and you find out what is the equivalent normal hours. That you multiply into your normal wage rate, and that is how you find out the total wages. Clear? They we had solved one problem on this one. Yes, this is my overtime. Clear? All right. Next. Yeah. Certain I think uh, the material chapter, certain small theory relating stores that there is there. That and the overtime uh, uh, employee part of theory will read, and then we'll move straight away move into problems of labor. Okay. Yeah, I think some small concept two bin system had not covered. Two bin system very simple. There are two bins here. One is large bin and another smaller bin. In the smaller bin, what do we keep? Reorder level. Yes. So under this system, one small pot should stock the quantity equal to the reorder level. Right. First, the large part is emptied. After that, you come to the and use the smaller bin where ROL is come. Obviously, when you come to the smaller bin, you play at ROL. ROQ is placed. Yes. At ROL, a reorder quantity is placed. So that is my two bin system. Then VED we already learned, right? VED we have learned. Next, very important here. Important treatment. This is with respect to my stores ledger. This is with respect to my stores ledger. Okay, here. What are the treatments they have given? Next, returns to vendors. Whenever you return goods to your vendors, it is similar to issue. Yes or no? It is similar to issue. And at what rate we do it? Rate at which it was supplied to me. Yes, so vendor A has given me goods, right? Vendor A has given me say ten, ten uh, goods. Yes, vendor A has given me ten goods, out of which two goods I am returning it. He had given me at the rate of hundred rupees per unit. So I will now record the issue also at hundred rupees. All of you clear? Yes, all of you understood. All right, next. Yes. So when there is return from production department, when there is a reduction from production department, what do I do? It is similar to receipts. Yes. When they return to the stores, it's like receipts to me, and the rate at which it was issued to the production, that is what I will record it at. Right? Was issued to production. Next, shortage. It is similar to issue. Yes. Any shortage is similar to issue and regular pricing methodology, whether it is LIFO, FIFO, weighted average, simple average, etc. Whatever is given, that is what we will follow. Next one is surplus. It is similar to receipts. Right? Immediate previous issue rate is used to record the receipt. Clear? Yes. Then we already learned the setting of stock level A, B, C, and R. These are all material control uh, or inventory control techniques. Setting of stock level, ABC analysis, FSN, VED, EOQ, and stock taking. Yes. 
for this is another important topic material losses right material losses what are the different material losses first one waste first one is waste right it is that loss of the <coughs> raw material which has no recoverable value right material loss during the production process which has no recoverable value i call it as waste clear next scrap the important i mean the terminology i had used here was it is incidentally produced yes scrap is incidentally produced which has low recoverable value yes incidentally produced during the production process which has low recoverable value i call it as scrap if you remember sawdust was the example right saw sawdust right next defective right defective it is the final product with certain defects right which can be rectified economically yes which can be rectified economically by spending certain additional amount that i call it as defect right so a scratch on the watch glass if you remember that can be rectified economically this is a defect next obsolete right obsolete what do i mean by obsolete it will become outdated because of a change in technology change in fashion best example is typewriter best example is typewriter last one is spoilage what do i mean by spoilage it is so badly damaged that i cannot rectify it economically yes i cannot rectify it economically that is why i call it as spoilage clear all right next my employee cost and direct expenses here like i said labor consists of direct and indirect labor right time keeping and time book uh, time booking time keeping is total time spent yes time booking is record of actual time spent on various jobs that is my time booking idle time analysis it is the time during which no production is carried out because the workers remain idle even though he is paid right normal it is by prime cost or factory overhead abnormal which i take it to costing pnl account idle time all right treatment of idle time that is next labor turnover rate of change in composition of labor force during a particular period over time is wages double the normal wages this is norm as per factories act however in the question whatever they give that is what you have to consider i have told that time and again okay next double shift so what's the difference between over time and double shift over time means aarti is coming to the organization normal working hours is say 9 to 6 she works till 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock in the night whatever after normal working hours after 6 o'clock whatever she has worked till 9 in the night that is my over time yes double shift is what aarti is working from 9 to 6 itself right 9 to 6 i mean sorry uh, morning shift and evening shift there are two shifts for example so morning shift say is from early morning 6 o'clock till afternoon 12 o'clock evening shift is from again say 5 o'clock till say 12 uh, 12 in the night right so that is morning shift and evening shift so aarti comes and works in the morning right and the divya and deepa say they come in the evening shift so that is double shift clear yes all right so double shift is different employees so therefore they are paid normal wages itself right so aarti is coming in the morning and they are coming in the evening so there is no extra payment next time and motion study time study is a technique of observing and recording for an operation right next is motion study if you remember i had given the example right movement of uh, you know uh, <coughs> material i mean men movement of men from one department to the other so you have do motion study so that we know how to design the layout in order to reduce the movement of man uh, manpower so that idle time is as less as possible that is my motion study yes so motion study is what motion study involves determination of the best way to perform a particular task to bring down the movement of machinery and workers to the minimum yes job analysis yes again it involves determining the list of qualifications and skill required by worker to perform the job so i i have given the same example as our industry itself right so for example say a first level fresher what is the uh job <clears throat> qualification required next uh, ex accounts executive what is the qualification required if he has to if he have to promote into senior accounts executive what is the number of experience and qualification required if he has to become a manager assistant manager what is the qualification required yes rahul if you are tomorrow going to become a cfo what is the qualification required what is the number of years of experience you want yes rahul you will become a cfo or you will go into practice you don't know now okay you think so 
tomorrow if rahul has to become a cfo he has to think that what is the qualification required you know if there might be a requir requirement that he should be a chartered accountant and a cfa right or maybe only a cfa so it depends so after passing you may have to do cfa so it all depends so the, listing out those qualifications i call it as job analysis according to job analysis job evaluation is a systematic method or technique of analyzing the worth of the job yes so rahul if he has to become cfo how much should i pay rahul tomorrow so determining the worth of the job that is my job evaluation merit rating is it involves analyzing or evaluating the performance of the workers who are doing the job like i said the appraisal system right every year or every uh, you know once in 6 uh, months an appraisal rating happens for every employee right so arthi's appraisal will happen rahul's appraisal aditi so all are employees so i will have to rate them right based on the performance based on their kras or key result areas right so how have they performed the organization so that is called as merit rating again formula time rate we earn this time taken into time rate right piece rate is number of units produced into piece rate halsey premium that is my wages plus earning so hours worked into rate per hour into 50% of time saved into time rate all right next i'll say wire premium plan i'll say wire premium plan okay here what is it is it same like halsey premium plan only only the difference is instead of 50% we consider 33% 33.13% as that is the only difference clear next row and plan again we discussed it is a time a time taken into time rate as it is then time saved by time allowed into a uh, time taken into time rate clear time saved by time allowed into time taken into time rate. next separations method and replacement method we are already learned all of this we discussed all of this flux method is number of separations plus number of uh, replacement divided by average number of work uh, number of accessions okay not number of replacement change this later okay whenever you get this material you have to change it number of separations plus number of accessions divided by average number of workers into 100 that is my flux method all right that's it right this is my theory of right. yes sarthi Uh, sir, that has a plan. Thirty-three point one third. I'll say uh, where plan. Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. The same logic, sir. Two third is retained by the. Employee. Yeah, that. Asked. Instead of fifty percent, thirty-three percent. That's all. Okay. There it is. One third, two third ratio. Here it is fifty-fifty percent ratio. Okay. That is. I normally it may yes. not be asked in your exam. Don't think it's covered in your study material also. Right. Earlier there, since it just a uh, dev, let's slight deviation from this. I thought we'll just cover it off so that in case they ask in the examination as a bouncer question also you should be in a position to answer on test day. But more or less it may not be asked. Okay, normally you just uh, this is what is the fifty percent one only they ask. Okay. Yes. Yeah? All right. Okay. Now let's go to the RTP May twenty twenty two. Yes. Yeah. One of you read. A total of one not eight labor. A total of one not eight labor hours has been put in a particular job cart for repair work, engaging a semi-skilled and skilled labor, Mr. Deep and Mr. Sam, respectively. The hours devoted by both the workers individually on a daily basis for this particular job are given below. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. The skilled labor also worked on Sunday for ten hours. Sunday, Saturday. Sa Saturday for ten hours. Sunday is a weekly holiday, and each worker has to work for eight hours on all weeks, weekdays, and five hours on Saturdays. The workers are, however, paid full wages for Saturday. Eight hours for five hours worked. Semi-skilled and skilled worker is paid ordinary wage, uh, that is rupees four hundred and six hundred respectively. Per day of eight hours labor. Further, the workers are also paid the earnings allowance twenty percent. Extra hours works over and above eight hours are also paid at ordinary wage rate. However, overtime premium of hundred percent of ordinary wage rate is paid if a worker works for more than nine hours in a day and forty eight hours in a week. You are required to compute the wages of Mr. Deep. 
semi skilled and mr sam skilled okay yes anyone how do i solve this problem yes unmute and answer simple don't worry you solve this problem and we just discuss the old time uh, theory also so that only you have to solve us today okay we had what did we learn we learned daily limit and weekly limit no based on that only we solved so uh, going to solve so just tell me you know what is that how do i do it sir uh yeah. like we we'll list out all the thing and then uh, what is the number of hours that is above 8 hours will also be listed and then above 9 hours will also be listed and to that 8 above 8 hours that means for example for 8 hours 10.5 minus 8 to that we will actually give a, a normal wage rate and which is above 9 hours will give a overtime uh, will uh, overtime but how how i had done and how how i had solved very simple it was not so complicated how i had done if you remember i just wrote down all the hours Monday to Friday, I wrote on all the hours. I minus nine hours from it. Why should I again bifurcate extra hours, this, that, and all that? Is the question asking no? That ICI is simply they want to complicate, so they are doing yes. How I had done very simple. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I read everything. So I total. So I write for ten point five. Is it more than nine hours? So we over time frame here. What is so this question now? That is important. Okay, this question. What does it say? For over time, what does it say? More than nine hours. Yes, it says more than nine hours. So whatever is more than nine hours, only that I will consider. So here, ten point five minus nine, eight is not greater than nine. So this will become zero. Ten point five minus nine, nine point five minus nine, ten point five minus nine. Whatever it is, I will add. Yes, that is based on my daily limit. Based on weekly limit, what should I do? Add all the days and see if it is what more than what more 48 than forty-eight hours. hours. And then what do I do? Next step is what do I consider? Whichever is higher. Which ever is higher. Higher. Are you sure? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. This is little tricky. Okay, I'll tell you why. First round again, you may not get it easily. Okay, so concentrate. Okay. Previous I C A study material problem. Other course, Karan, I knew that most of them may have this. Uh, you know, may not get it at the first go. That is why I have taken out the I C A study material also. All right. Here, let us see. Similar problem. This is all of you. Ilian Manidal Gupta. Ili one employee they have given like this, right? So if you see same thing, ten point five, eight, ten point five, nine point five, ten point five. Same figures they have given. Okay. Only thing here vertical, they are horizontal. They are horizontal. They have given so that it looks like a complete different problem. That's all. Okay. And here three employees are there. There are only two employees are there. Here what they have been told? This guy is zero, right? That is a semi skilled or something is zero. Skilled worker has worked even on Saturday for ten hours. That is the only difference. Yes. Mean now problem is here. Now read this now. Any one of you read this from here? Overtime is paid twice of ordinary wage rate if a worker works for more than nine hours in a day or forty-eight hours in a week. Ah, uh, wait again. Read it. Overtime is paid twice of original wage rate if a worker works for more than nine hours in a day or forty-eight hours in a week. Okay. Now, ah, uh, where is that? Here. Yeah. Read the same sentence here. That or, or this part, pa. Last part from here. Extra hours worked over and above eight hours are also paid at ordinary wage rate. However, overtime premium of hundred percent of ordinary wage rate is paid if a worker works for more than nine hours in a day and forty-eight hours in a week. What's the difference? Or and and. Here they have given just premium. They they have given okay. both. So now. You understood at least wordings. Now I will read. Okay, what does it say here? From here, extra hours you leave. I have told you guys that extra hours is not going to impact your calculations. You go back and solve this problem again. Which problem? Which I had solved in the class. I have to go through that again. Okay, but it's important for me to explain the difference here. Okay, extra hours worked over and above eight hours are also paid at ordinary wage rate, which you already know, right? Because it doesn't matter nine. That's why if you remember my calculation, I always considered nine. Okay. However, if they say it is paid at one point two five, then you solve like how study materials problem. Then you make one more column and then do all of that. Okay. Now, overtime premium of hundred percent of ordinary wage rate is paid if. A worker works for more than nine hours in a day and a forty-eight hours in a week. Is work for more than nine hours in a day and forty-eight hours in a week. So now, 
what happens is it is not whichever is higher it is not whichever is higher both the conditions have to be satisfied right if it is work for more than 9 hours in a day and for 48 hours in a week so now what happens is first i have to check whether he has worked for 48 hours in a week or not only then the one and a half hour condition will apply yes because one of the days he would have worked so first i will check whether the 48 hours condition yes 48 hours condition is met now my condition is satisfied now what i will do is i will go by individual days itself right i will go by individual days itself that this is the cumulative condition first 48 hours yes applies has he worked for more than 48 hours then i will work for that clear all right so that problem you have to solve a or b whichever is higher in this problem first consider whether 48 hours condition satisfied condition satisfied then you do as per per day calculation and based on per day calculation only you compute the overtime do not go back to 48 hours again all of you understood yes let us go to the problem now all right okay Here, what does it say? So simple, right? They have the normal hours, extra hours, overtime hours, and all. According to me, this breakup is not required because this is nine only. Everything in excess of nine hours, uh, that is what you have to write. So, for example, here one point five here. Okay, wait, wait. Let me write it down. Yeah. So this is one point five. Yes, one point five here. Next, here it is zero. Correct. Right? Here it is again one point five. One point five. Point five. Point five. One point five. 1.5 and again 1.5 yes so when i add 1.5 1.5 1.5 4.5 plus 5 it is 5 yes so that is what 5 is here that is the 5 which is here yes this is my daily limit weekly limit add all of it how much does it come to 5 49. plus 49 hours 49 yes how much does it come to total it is 49 hours wait All right. Total, it is how much? Forty nine hours. Yes. So, is it more than forty eight hours? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Satisfied. Therefore, now I will calculate overtime premium on five hours. Okay. Now I will calculate the overtime premium on five hours. So that will become five into two ten. Correct. Ten. Mm-hmm. So now, how does this fifty four come? For if you remember my equation, how I had done is forty nine is the total number of hours. From that, I remove this five hours. Yes. I remove the five hours. So that is normal. Normal hours it becomes forty-four hours plus ten hours. That is fifty-four hours. Yes. Normal hours is forty-four. Yes or no? Forty-nine. Forty-nine is total number of hours minus overtime premium of five hours. Overtime of five hours. So forty-four hours normal hours. If the plus my overtime equivalent uh, overtime hours that is five into two ten. So forty-four plus ten fifty-four hours. Yes. So based on fifty-four hours, I will pay the overtime. Next. When is work for ten hours? See again, if you remember what the uh, this this point I had already discussed. Okay, what is that? Saturday point for eight hours for five hours of hours worked, right? But it is not saying that if you work for more than five hours, also you will be paid at the day equal rate proportion. Nila, if you work for five hours, you will still be paid for eight hours. If you work for more than eight hours, that point is just irrelevant. Whatever is the number of hours you work, that is what you will get paid for. I hope you guys are recalling at least little bit of the problem we have solved. Yes. So Adi Ivaga, same thing, but he has worked for ten hours. Yes, ten hours means one hour is the overtime premium. Yes or no? Ten minus nine. Adi, I am telling you, don't go by this. You follow my methodology. You remember my table? Yes, all of you. Yes, sir. Yes, my table. Where is? Uh, let me check if I. Yeah. Yes, this is the table we have done. Yes or no? Eight point five five. So same way. Now what will happen? I'll have. Ten here, right? Then one here. This will become six. All of you understood? Same thing. It is yes. This will become six. Only difference now is only difference now, which is the key difference here. Okay. Only difference now is what will happen? Since the forty-eight hours condition is already checked, no. For overtime premium, you will consider only six only. You will not consider ten. Why ten? I am talking about because fifty-nine hours is the total hours work. Fifty-nine minus forty-nine. Actually, in my earlier, what would have been A or B, whichever is higher, I would have taken ten hours. Arthak te jaya ena dhu. Total hours worked. All of you. Total hours worked. Now is how much? Forty-nine. Forty-nine for 
the first case second case he has also worked uh, for 10 hours on saturday 59 right? so 59 what is my weekly limit 48 minus 59 yes or no so i would have taken normally that or 6 hours 6 hours is normal yes or no this is how we do right 9 uh, whatever 10.5 minus 9 and all you do then you get 6 correct so a or b which is how you have done because of the word and 48 hours have already checked Right? Then daily limit will come, daily limit I will apply. That is how you have to interpret this. Clear? Right? Yeah. All of you understood? See, or when I say or, no, it has to be whichever is higher. Otherwise, what is the point? When I say or, it has to be whichever is higher. When I say and, which you will consider, it is not that whichever is beneficial. Right? 48 hours, I will check for condition applicability. Then I will apply per day limit only. Clear? So this is not as per the Factories Act. I will show again for all of those guys who are gurising me. Factories Act, if you want to check, here it is there. Check. See, this is the Factories Act. Okay, as per Factories Act, where a workers in a where a work worker works in a factory for more than nine hours in a day, or for more than forty eight hours in a week. He shall, in respect of overtime work, be entitled to wages at the rate twice his ordinary rate of wages. Clear? So there also it is or. So that is why I had explained you guys those things. Now it is a little different. When the word and they are using, what we do is first 48 hours, whether it is applied. Yes, 48 hours is applicable. Then you go for one and a half hours calculation. Based on one and a half hours only, you will calculate the overtime. Clear? So the way you solve the problem will be same. Only thing is you will not do A or B whichever is higher. What you will do here is first you will solve. You want me to solve this problem now? You want me to solve? Anyone wants me to solve the problem? This problem. Artaita logic. All of you understood the logic. Clear? Very simple. A step. Difference Artaita. Anybody who has a doubt? Yes, Divya Deepa, I'll come to you. Anyone else who has a doubt? Crystal clear? 100% this my, this problem might come in your examination because previous exam on Bandila. RTP problem, recent RTP May 22. This they might just lift this problem. That's why it's extremely important that you guys understand the problem. If you have slightest of those, you can ask me. I will I don't mind staying back. I'll answer you guys. Yes, first Divya and Deepa. So the value 10 we got there, it's uh, twice of the ordinary wage rate, no, sir. No, no, no. What time I told is. Sorry, 59 minus my weekly hour limit of 48. So 11, for, for example. 11, not 10. It's not twice. 11 is the old time hours. See, if I have gone with my uh, or as a word use, what I do? 59 hours total hours work minus 48 hours the weekly limit. 59 minus 48 uh, is 11. 11 into 12 uh, into 2 will be my equal in normal hours. Yes? Understood? So, no, sir. In the problem, we had that 10. So is it like uh, 50, uh, something like 40? Well, no? So can you, could you share the screen, sir? Which, uh, the answer part or the question? Answer uh, part. Huh? Answer part. Of the RTP, na? Yes, sir. You want me to share the RTP? Okay, okay. RTP. This one? Uh, yes, sir. Here are the 10 uh, beside 5, no, sir. The first table I'm speaking on. This one, no? 10. No, sir. The above table. Ha uh ha. -huh, okay, 10. Yeah, yeah. Tell me. Yes, that is twice of the ordinary wage. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's twice of the 2 into 2 was 10. We have solved this problem. Don't do it. So, if you remember how I had solved, I will show you that. I will share, share screen that problem what we solved in the class. Okay. Let me just. Uh, yeah, this was the problem, right? Divya and Deepa. So what I did is, old time hours to be considered is A or B, whichever is higher, right? So A is, uh, here it is 1 hour, okay? And B, it is 5 hours. So A or B, which is higher, 5 hours. So what I do, normal working hours is equals to 49 minus 5, which is 44 hours. Equal in normal hours, 5 into 2, it is 10 hours, right? So I add both, I get 54. See, I'm doing the same way like they are doing, but my presentation is a little different, that's all. Because I don't want, I don't agree with that extra hours, this, that, then what happens? No, Saturday will become very confusing. If I get extra hours in between, then three plus one. Why is it required only? I don't understand. Till now, I'm not understood. I want to meet that person who has designed this problem. 
why you solved it the way is done in the you understood any one of you have understood why study material is solved in the way it has then you please explain now i got back i have not understood why for you very simple okay i go with the you know two arrow marks in that simple chart when i read a problem that is how i interpret this a or b which is i read it is so simple i don't understand why you have to complicate it right so that is why divya deepa you solved it like ici problem no? that's why you told me the way you did ah i had solved it differently okay but yeah do, do, doesn't matter however you solve but logic is important that's all so saturday don't get confused if you are doing like that okay yes stage is winning sir the, the last answer you showed was this problem answer no sir illa ma rtp na athwa excel la sir excel excel is the uh, what i solved in the class nan adan solve madilla adinga agutte solve madake have to solve no i have never andre i have not solved it no with you guys have i solved excel it will come when i solve it with you guys i have not solved it with you guys for saturday we lad one hour no sir for individual when we calculate on individual basis individual yes 40 is one hour very simple 10 hours is worked daily limit is 9 hours 10 minus 9 1 hour simple alli avaru first 5 hours thagondi matte 4 extra hours adukku eradukku that is confusing ah yes sir whichever is less well minus so 59 minus 6 and plus 6 into 2 alla alla whichever is less concept will not come here that's what i'm trying to say okay here now what i do not is fine first part let us you have understood a or b whichever is higher not less whichever is higher weekly limit or daily limit whichever is higher that i take minus it from my normal working hours right or total working hours i find out normal working hours then ot hours i multiply it into 2 then i add it to this right that's how i got 54 hours. that is clear no yes sir here now what i do in this problem very important what do i do is first i do whether check whether the weekly limit is right so is it 59 hours is more than 48 hours right so weekly limit satisfied next because of the word and next what i do is i find out the daily limit what is the variances right so first i five hours is done right because previous also there are five that is very simple right for 49 hours. last one is 10 hours is worked on saturday daily limit is 9 hours 10 minus 9 is 1 hour so that 1 hour i'll add it to the 5 hours so 6 hours 6 into 2 12 hours would be my equivalent normal working hours clear yes. so 59 minus 6 ot assets 53 53 plus 12 okay 53 plus 12 so are they barbecue again let us check okay 53 plus 12 that is 65 hours clear all of you understood yes important important problem important problem. all of you should compulsorily solve this problem huh? and revision and homework or thing should compulsory solve this problem twice okay please solve this problem twice all right next again suggested answer simple problem is there let us go through it right uh one c Yeah, question one, C. This is my, yeah, one of you read this. A skilled worker is paid a guaranteed wage rate of rupees 150 per hour. The standard time allowed for a job is 10 hours. He took eight hours to complete the job. He has been paid the wages under Rowan incentive plan. You are required to, first one, calculate an effective hourly rate of earnings under Rowan incentive plan. Two, calculate the time in which he should complete the job if the worker is placed under HALSE incentive scheme, that is 50%, and he wants to maintain the same effective hourly rate of earnings. Okay. So, first one, a skilled worker is paid a guaranteed wage rate of 150 per, uh, per hour, right? So, this is what my T time rate, yes or no? This is my time rate. Next, 10 hours is what? Time allowed. Time allowed. Uh, 8 hours is? Time, 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 time saved is? Two hours. Wow. So we have all the information that is given. Can we easily compute what is the incentive scheme as per Rowan plan? Yes. 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 So we'll apply the formula and we'll compute what is the incentive. So let's go to the question. Answer. <coughs> see. Right. So here that is what you see. Either they have done it like this. You don't have to do all this. Okay. Do it normally. Apply. Put the formula and then do it normal. So what they have done? Time taken into time rate. Yes. Time taken into time rate. 1800 hours. Bonus is what? See. Here you see. You look at the institute. 
normally you check the institute formula huh? institute formula is not my formula if you guys if you guys remember non formula you know and formulas for institute formula bare itu yes or no yes. they had followed the same this thing but you know what they have done they are comp- copying aman sir now check i am serious or not nanna copy maartidare so what have they done time saved by time, time allowed into time taken to time it is done ah go and tell them i have this proprietary right over this equation tell them not to use my equation okay ah uh, but i'm just trying to show you guys our work so you remember no i told you guys this this logically this is how it has to be nanage yaru hel kottilla but uh, when i you understand the logic you certain things are easily understood yes so same thing the time second time saved by time allowed divided into time taken into time rate right that's what you do then you add you get this clear and then you find out the hourly rate so hours worked is 8 hours therefore effective hourly rate is 180 rupees clear very simple next what is the next part of the question it says that if the hourly rate has to be the same then under his halsey incentive scheme what is the time so calculate the time in which he should complete the job that is what am i supposed to calculate time taken time taken if the worker is placed under halsey incentive scheme right and he wants to see why they are mentioning 50% because 33% alla adike okay i am just telling you guys and he wants to maintain the same effective hourly rate of earnings right so here it's an equation yes halsey premium plan the effective hourly rate now you know what is it one eighty is we just find out because it has to be same as roman incentive plan one eighty rupees is equals to tell me the formula now yes halsey roman plan divided by halsey roman plan we got it halsey roman plan is what now you have to find uh, halsey halsey premium plan roman and rain halsey premium plan yeah tell me the equation because it's what is otherwise you're given total now it is hourly rate yes to divide it that is the only thing as stay see that simple thing if you remember no then you'll get full marks as stay all right so let's come back to the equation what is it um, yeah here it is see let time taken be t right so that's what they've done 180 rupees is equals to rate into hours work plus rate into 50% of time saved by hours work the hours work maadi andre you will not get the answer right that's what you do that then you otherwise also you know what most of them will get it answer maaduvaga equation tally aagthella yeno yochisthire it will but you will waste your time you will waste your precious time and you will have lot of scratches in your answer sheet so that's why important that it should try, strike immediately yes so 180 is equal to this is the formula that tejasuni told us 150 into time taken plus 150 into 50 percent of time saved 10 minus t here right time saved will be 10 minus t divided by t solve for the equation and get the answer simple yes or no this is again my easy or average level whatever because you solve this problem it is coming so you you guys are seeing what is the kind of questions you are getting in examination yes or if you feel more confident now yes or no correct easily or if you 10 uh, 10 marks at the exam only everyone who is there in the class would have scored yes can i under confidently take that uh, assumption that all of you would have scored at least 10 marks correct 5 on 5 in material and 5 on 5 in labor yes all right so see a bouncer question would have been you know that previous question i discussed now about over time that is one of the bouncer questions because the way they have given that and and the maadi they have given so that is one of the bouncer questions aa tara barutte but you don't have to answer you can skip that question yes you can skip that question but what is important is to understand the bouncer inge or matte and observe maadi landre gone case so that you to observe yes all right next one all right i think uh, want a small break want a break or let uh, should i continue yes anyone who wants can I continue sure all of you yes yaar go beku but sunne kootidare i cut it you know <laughs> rahul look <laughs> rahul sits up the camera only he wants badly he wants a break is not doesn't have the bugats to say ah rahul yes 
But okay, two, two minutes break you want, you guys can take because 940 is I'm supposed to win. No two minutes stay. Just stretch your legs, hands, whatever, but stay here only. Don't go anywhere. Right? right? Two minutes break you guys take and then I'll continue. Okay.
Yes, come back all of you. Yeah, quickly. Fast, 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 fast. Come back. All right. So with that we completed only two chapters, material and labor. Yes, material and labor we have completed next. This is my overheads chapter. Yes, what is overheads? Very simple. Is the aggregate of my indirect material, indirect labor and indirect expenses. I call it as my overheads. Yes. All right. There. What did you learn in overheads? Okay, before we go into that, what are the other ways of calling? What are the other terminologies associated with overheads, right? It is also called as what? Overheads is also cost. called as indirect cost. cost. Yes, indirect cost. Next, supplementary cost and non productive cost. Yes, on cost, indirect cost. Supplementary cost and non productive cost, all of them also is, I call it as are nothing but overheads, right? All of these is nothing but my overheads. Next, we also learned the classification of overheads, yes or no? How it is classified? You have functional wise classification of overheads and behavioral wise classification of overheads. Behavior wise, what is it? Fixed overheads, variable overheads, and semi variable overheads, correct? Semi variable overheads. Next, under functional uh, function wise classification, what did you have? Your cost sheet, yes or no? Factory overheads, administration overheads, SD overheads, research and development overheads, etc. That is my functional classification of overheads. So, all right. Now, here we learned certain different new concepts we learned. Yes, remember, we learned what is absorption, correct? We had learned what is absorption or charging of overheads to particular goods and then we absorb. Yes, in that we learned different steps. First one is my primary distribution correct first is my primary distribution what do i mean by primary distribution say say i have rent right say i have rent then i have my indirect material i have my indirect labor etc indirect material and indirect labor what will i do first i will charge it to the particular departments yes using primary distribution so first i will do i'll charge this indirect material indirect labor and my rent also i will apportion to my respective production and service department using say square feet area yes or no this is my primary distribution what is secondary distribution distribution of cost from my service department to my primary department right or the production department i call it as my secondary distribution distribution of sec uh, the service department cost to the production department cost i call it as secondary distribution and once the cost has been discovered one secondary distribution is done i will now absorb this cost to the units produced using certain absorption rates and this process of absorbing or charging the uh, cost to the units produced i call it as absorption yes we also learned what is over absorption and what is under absorption what is over absorption when the absorbed over it is more than more than, than the actual over, over it i call it as over absorption what is under absorption? An absorption. Less than my actual overheads. I call it as I call it as under absorption. Clear? All of you? Yes. Under now again uh, this uh, secondary distribution, we learn different tech uh, methods. Yes or no? First one was my direct redistribution method. Under this, what happens? There is no reciprocal of services. Yes, there is no reciprocal of service or there is no service rendered or services rendered by service department to production department or vice versa is ignored. This is my direct redistribution method. Under step ladder method, there is only one way. Yes, that is either the one of the service departments produce, I mean, you know, provide services to the other, but not vice versa. Yes, only one way. That is X, X service department provides services to Y, but Y will not provide services to X. 
correct this is called as my step ladder method and last one is my reciprocal method wherein both service departments or more than one service departments are there and they provide services to each other that is there is reciprocal of services service department x providing services to y and y providing services to x clear this is my reciprocal method under reciprocal method we again learn different techniques right so first two method is simultaneous equation method next is my repeated distribution, distribution method and last one is trial and error, trial and error. yes again what is that you know in the when you solve the when we solve there is one problem in rtp we will solve that so that time we will know after that we learned they did certain or different techniques of absorption yes or no one is based on the units so total overheads divided by my number of units that is how one of the ways so that is a rate per unit method next you have as a percentage of material yes or no as a percentage of my direct material as a percentage of direct labor what is the formula total overheads is in the numerator you divide it by either direct material or direct labor or prime cost multiplied with the into 100 so percentage of material percentage of labor percentage of prime cost etc clear yes then we also learned what is machine hour rate yes what is machine hour rate cost of running a machine per hour this is my machine hour rate under that we again learned there are two types yes basic machine hour rate and comprehensive machine hour rate when to the basic machine hour rate i add what do i add all the overheads related to machine to the basic machine hour rate what do i add to arrive at my comprehensive machine hour rate Machine operators, uh, machine operators wages, excellent one. Yes, to my basic machine hour rate, I add the machine operators wages to arrive at comprehensive machine hour rate. Clear? This is my machine hour rate formula. Yes, all right. That's it. I think let's go through your material. If whatever points that I have not read, I mean, discuss now. We we'll go through. Yes. Overheads and absorption costing. Yeah. Overheads is equals to. Okay, one of you read. Overheads is equal to on cost is equal to indirect cost is equal to supplementary cost is equal to non-productive cost. Classification of overheads. Overheads, function-wise classification, behavior-wise classification, function-wise cl classification, factory overheads, administrative overheads, selling and distribution overheads. Research and development overheads, behavior-wise classification, fixed overheads, variable overheads, semi-variable, semi-fixed overheads, steps involved in distribution of overheads, collection and estimation of overheads, primary distribution, departmentalization of overheads, distribution of overheads to production and service departments based on allocation and appointment. Uh, what is the Se difference between allocation and apportionment? Yes, when something is directly allocable or allocated, can be allocated to a particular department or to a particular job, etc. I call it as allocation. Yes, when I cannot directly allocate it to that particular job or process, etc., then I apportion it. Yes or no? So rent, for a rent is the best example. We apportion rent. Yes, based on the area or square feet. Lighting, for example, based on the number of light points. This is all apportionment. Allocation is I know, for example, indirect material, indirect labor. Yes, that indirect material, indirect labor is for a particular product. Yes, so I can allocate it to that product. Clear? Yes. All right. Let's continue. Secondary distribution process of reapportionment, redistribution of service center overhead. To production department absorption methods of reappointment of service department expenses over production department. Reappointment. Okay. Re methods of reappointment. This reapportionment, sir. Yeah, that we should be corrected to reapportionment. Yeah. Direct redistribution method, step method, or non reciprocal method, reciprocal service method. Techniques of absorption minus formula or ascender. Formula or ascender. Yes. Rate per unit is equal to total overheads divided by total number of units. Percentage of material is equal to total overheads divided by direct materials into 100. 
percentage of labor is equal to total overheads divided by direct labor into 100. Percentage of prime cost is equal to total overheads divided by prime cost into 100. Labor hour rate is equal to total overheads divided by direct labor hour. Machine hour rate is equal to total overheads divided by direct machine hours. Machine hour rate, it means cost of running a machine per hour, which is divided into two. Basic or simple machine hour rate shall not include machine operator's wages. Comprehensive machine hour rate, machine operator's wages will be added. Steps to be followed, computing machine hour rate. Compute effective machine hour rates for the period. Identify and aggregate all fixed overheads and not fixed cost, unlike in the case in the case of operating costing. What is operating costing? I just started the chapter. Service costing. All right. Operating costing is nothing but service costing. In service costing, what do you have? If you remember, fixed variable and semi-variable hat, right? So there it was fixed cost and not just fixed overhead because it is operating cost, right? It's for the entire service, yes or no? It is for the entire service. So there it is fixed cost. This is only overheads. That in difference, uh, difference you should remember. Yeah, continue. Compute fixed overhead per machine hour on total basis. Identify variable overhead. Ascertain machine hour rate for each variable overhead. Normally variable overhead power depreciation, repairs and maintenance. Aggregate per unit overhead is equal to me basic machine hour rate. Add operator wages is equal to comprehensive machine hour rate. Over and absor under absorption of overheads. Over absorption, it means absorbed overheads are more than the actual overheads. Under absorption, it means absorbed overheads are less than the actual overheads. Accounting treatment for under or over absorption. Directly transferred to PL account, transfer initially to overheads adjustment account, and at the end of the period, the net balance to closing PL account costs the costing PL account charged to production based on supplementary overhead recovery rate and carry to the subsequent period for adjusting and at the end of the year transfer the balance to costing PL account. Overhead absorption rate is equal to amount of overhead incurred divided by basis of absorption. Predetermined overhead rate is equal to budgeted overhead for the period divided by budgeted basis for the period. Blanket overhead rate is equal to overhead cost for the entire factory for the period divided by base of base for the period, total labor cost, total machine cost, etc. Multiple overhead rate is equal to overhead allocated apportioned to each department divided by corresponding base. Variable portion in semi-variable overhead is equal to change in amount of expenses divided by change in activity or quantity. Depreciation, useful life, fixed, cost variable. That's it. Okay. All right. So now here, what does this mean? This is what you're discussing re uh, recently in operating costing also, right? If it is given based on useful life, you treat it as fixed. If it's given based on hours, you treat it as variable. Clear? All right. Yes. That is your theory of overheads. Let's go to... RTP. Yes. Yeah, I'll just go through this. Okay. Threads Limited, a manufacturing company having two production departments A and B and two service departments X and Y. Right. So two de production departments and two service departments. The following is the budget for March 2022. You've got direct material, direct wages, factory rent, power, depreciation, general netting, and then perquisites. All right. So this one already your allocation is done. Yes. For this allocation and primary distribution, both is done. However, primary distribution now is pending for the overheads. Yes or no? Because this is direct already, it is done. Allocation is done. Now primary distribution I need to do for factory power depreciation, general lighting and purposes. Yes or no? Yes? <laughs> yes or no? All right. Factory rent on what basis will I do? Area. 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 Factory rent I do based on area. Power? 
First time you saw, so somewhere you'll get a doubt. Purpose it's worth. Why? Why are you bothered? Purpose it's yes. If you're not having given in the form of ca- directly cash to the employee to some other means, maybe food means this that and that. But at the end of the day, what is it? Wages. Yeah, it is wages. Yes or no? So based on the direct wages only, you build a portion. Clear? All right. Okay, so that you do the primary distribution. So here, let us check if we are all right now. Direct materials, obviously, direct they have already given. Yes, factory lending based on area, power based on horsepower into machinery, depreciation based on capital, then uh, general lending based on light points, and focus is based on direct wages. Yes, so you use this and then you apportion. You go apportion the cost. And this is what is the primary distribution cost. How do you got it? This is the cost of the primary distribution. Next. First one is that we are going to solve using the simultaneous equation method. So first one is what to various departments show the distribution. That is my primary distribution. The next prepare a statement of showing redistribution of service department based on that is my secondary distribution using simultaneous equation trial and error method repeated distribution method. First one simultaneous equation method very simple. What is the equation? X is equals to y. That is x right nine lakh twenty thousand. All of you can see correct nine lakh twenty thousand plus. Uh, What well, much percentage of y? X. So x is y is five percent of y is apportioned to x. Yes, five percent of y is apportioned to x. Let me use a different thing. Yes. So y five percent of y is apportioned to x. Clear. So therefore nine lakh twenty thousand plus zero point zero five y. Same way eleven lakh forty thousand here eleven lakh forty thousand plus zero point zero two x two zero. Any key here twenty percent of x given here. Okay. So twenty percent of x is apportioned to y. Therefore, you add twenty percent. Simultaneous equation. That's it. You form this equation, then you substitute x in y or y in x. They are substituting substituting the value of x in y. Okay, x in y. Solve for the equation. You will get the answer. Right. Once you have got this answer, again substitute this value in one of the equation in x equation, and you will get what is x. Therefore, x is so much nine lakh eighty six eight sixty nine. Y is so much. Then you do secondary distribution table. Yes. to do the distribution table here what you do very simple you not at the service department anymore very important here you have only production department in this what you do to know x in what ratio 55 and 25 what is that ratio here they have given 55 and 25 ratio yes so that 55 and 25 ratio you will use and apportion 9 lakh 86000 yes 869 to a and b as per primary distribution overhead of a and b is already you will get it here As department X will do, then same way department Y thirteen lakh thirty seven three seventy four. You will apportion between A and B, and then you will find what the total cost is. Clear? This is based on simultaneous equation method. Repeated distribution method. It is the same. Sorry, trial and error method. It is the same as simultaneous equation method only. Okay, same logic. All of you guys understanding? Trial and error method, same logic. So now what will I do? Here is 
I'll have only the service departments now. Okay, based on the ratio that is twenty percent and five percent. Yes, they provide to each other. That so Skanda, what will I do? Y department. So now first I will take X nine lakh twenty thousand. I'll apply so twenty percent of it and then distribute to Y. Yes, thirteen lakh twenty four. The so same way I keep doing it. Yes, that's trial and error method. And then I'll arrive at the same answer as my simultaneous equation method. Correct, Pratibha. Same answer as my simultaneous equation method. Again, so obviously the distribution now will be same as my simultaneous equation method. Clear? The distribution of this will be same as my simultaneous equation method. Next, redistribution. Uh, that is a repeated redistribution method. What I do here, I take everything, all the departments I take, and then one by one. First, I will distribute x to all the departments. Clear? Then I will add whatever is uh, x I distributed to y. I will add these two. So thirteen lakh twenty four thousand. Now this thirteen lakh twenty four thousand I distribute to all. Correct? Then sixty six thousand two hundred will be left. That I will distribute to everything. The same way we keep doing it, and you will arrive at the same answer. All of you understood? Yes. Simple. Aste. So in this, there is no like I have told you guys. You have to be fast in this problem. Lengthy problem that they solve. Right? Ten marks. This if this problem comes, it may it is usually for ten marks, but simple. Yes or no? Correct. All of you can solve this. Yes. There is no complication here. That labor problem was a little bit complicated. You had certain adjustments there, but it's very simple. Yes. This problem very simple. Hundred percent. All of you can solve, and it's a cake walk, but fast. You should have the speed to solve this problem. Speed is right. Taka taka taka. You can solve. And that M plus M R C and all those things you should know. I hope you guys know calculator. Calculator use madak barbe ko. Not just plus minus. But how to re memory recall? Mado do everything. All the functions of uh, calculator, you know, means you can solve this fast. Clear? Okay. Now let's go through the uh, suggested answer. Yeah, question number five is your uh, problem on absorption costing. The similar problem we have solved in the class. Again, you guys can see, see till now anything that I have done that which I have not solved in the class. Yes, all the things that we see, I am not saying the exact same problem I have solved, but similar problem with just with different numbers. Yes or no? Similar concept I have already solved in the class. Okay, this is I think your uh, standard costing. Yes, this is the answer. This is the question. Yeah, one of you read this question. Xyz Limited manufactures a single product. It requires factory overheads at determined rate of rupees twenty per man day. During this year, twenty twenty one, the total factory overheads incurred on the man days actually worked were thirty five point five zero lakhs and one point five lakh day per respectively days respectively. Out of the amount of thirty five point five zero lakhs, two lakhs were in respect of wages for stick period. And one lakh was in respect of expenses of previous year booked in this current year. During the period, fifty thousand units were sold. At the end of the period, twelve thousand completed units were held in stock, but there was no opening stock of finished goods. Similarly, there was no stock of uncompleted units at the beginning of the period, but at the end of the period, there were twenty thousand uncompleted units, which may be treated as Sixty-five percentage complete in all respects. On investigation, it was found that forty percentage of unabsorbed overheads were due to factory inefficiency, and the rest were attributable to increase in the cost of indirect materials and indirect labor. You are required to calculate the amount of unabsorbed overheads during the year twenty twenty one. Show the accounting treatment of unabsorbed overheads in cost accounts and cost journal entries. Okay, simple. Same problem I have done. Almost more or less same problem I have solved in the class. So anyway, for those of you who do not remember, right? And for those of you who remember but have started to forget, for them let us recall. All right. Yes. Simple. What does it say? X Y Z limited a single product. It, it recovers factory overheads at a predetermined rate of twenty per man day. Why do I need this to calculate over absorption and under absorption? So at twenty per man day, it is absorbed. So now I have to find out the number of man days, right? Then I, once I found out the number of man days, I know what is the absorption, right? 
Then we also have actual cost which is incurred. Let us see during the year 2021, the total factory over its incurred and the man days actually worked were 30.5.5 lakhs is the actual overheads. 30.35.5 lakhs, 1.5 lakh days respect. So 1.5 days is my 1.5 lakhs is my man days. This I multiply into 20, I get the overheads absorbed. Yes, please is finished, correct? I get the overheads absorbed. Next, out of the amount of 30.35.5 lakhs, 2 lakhs were in respect of wages for 6 period and 1 lakh was in respect of expenses of previous year booked. So will this be taken, treated as over absorption or under absorption? Skanda. Will this be treated as over absorption, under absorption? No. Why? Because because of six period, it will be absorbable in nature. So from 30.5, 35.5 lakh, this two lakhs because of six period, I will remove. Yes. Next, pay the city one lakh of my previous year period in the current year it is coming. Yes or no? What does it say? And one lakh was in respect of expenses of the previous year booked in this current year. Correct? Previous year booked in this current year. Again, can I treat it as over absorption, under absorption? One second. There's some disturbance mute, yeah. Over absorption, under absorption, yes, I cannot yes. this. Therefore, that also I will reduce. All of you clear with this, correct? So 35.5 lakh minus 2 and minus 1. 32.5 lakh is the amount to be considered for over absorption or under absorption. From this 32.5 lakh, what I will do? I will minus 20 into 1.5 lakh, yes. 20 into 1.5 lakh is 30 lakh. Anta Ankoli, I'm saying, trust me. So 20 into 1.5 lakh is 30 lakhs, yes or no? Correct. 30 lakh in the, you will again, 32.5 lakh, I think. 35.5 minus 3, 32.5 lakh minus 32.5 lakh is my over absorption or under absorption? Under absorption. Absorbed overheads is less than no. the actual overheads. Yes. Found there's some disturbance huh? there. Uh, see, absorbed overheads is less than my actual overheads. Correct. Absorbed overheads is 30 lakhs. Actual overheads is how much? 32. No. 32.5 so lakh is under absorption. Now, this under absorption, I need to now charge, charge it to my finished goods, work in progress, closing stock, and my uh, abnormal, uh, this thing, uh, costing to handle account because whatever is abnormal. Yes, correct. So, this 2.5 lakh now, I will have to charge using what? What do I read? What rate do I use? Supplementary rate, if you guys remember. Yes or no? I have to find out what is the number of goods equivalent goods per units produced. Find out what is the supplementary rate, multiply it, and then charge it. Yes or no? Now, very simple. One more concept before this. Uh, the, before I go to the answer. In case of under absorption, the abs under absorbed overheads. What do I do? Do I debit it to the respective units? That is, finished goods, closing stock, uh, cost of goods sold, or do I credit? Debit. Why, Rahul? Sir, because absorbed over overage is less, so that uh, expenses are realized at a lesser uh, value. So that's that the answer, right? So if at all it had been uh, recorded at the correct rate or the actual rate, I would have debited, no? Yes or no? Expenses you debited. So here what will I do? I will debit it. So I will debit the respective ledges and I will credit overhead control account. Clear? Yes? Now let's go to the answer. What to say? So the total production overheads actually incurred during the year 30.5.5 lakh, correct? From this, what did I minus? I minus my wages incurred during strike period and the uh, what is booked in the current year, right? 3 lakh, so 32.5 lakh minus 30 lakh is my actual overheads. So under absorption is 32, uh, 2.5 lakhs, correct? All of you, this is what we discussed from 2.5 lakhs. Now, what will I do is 1 lakh is yeah, correct. Now, before that, we have to give adjustment to all that 40%, 65% and all that given is. So, what is that? Here, read the question. 40% was what? Yeah, one second. Where is it? Sixty-five percent is the working progress completion status, and forty percent is they've given here. Sorry, or uh, it is found that forty percent of the unabsorbed overheads were due to factory inefficiency. So two point five lakhs into forty percent, whatever it is, that is that will go to my costing P and L account, correct? Because it was because of inefficiency. Whatever is remaining from that, we'll find out the supplementary rate and charge it to all the units. That is uh, finished goods, cost of goods sold, and my closing stock. Clear? Next. That is what they've given here. It is given in the statement uh, in the question that 62,000 units. That how did I? How is it 62,000 units? 50,000 units sold, 12,000 closing stock, and zero opening stock. Yes. 
so that is 62000 units were completely finished and 20000 units were six, uh, 65% complete yes that is the work in progress all of you understanding next 40% of the under absorbed products were due to factory inefficiency and the rest were attributable to increase in cost of indirect material and indirect labor so now 2.5 lakh into 40% 1 lakh you will charge to costing paid under account remaining 1 lakh 50000 you have to now charge it to the respective finished goods or uh, this thing cost of sales etc clear Therefore, now what will I do here? Equivalent units. So first one supplementary rate. How do I find out? 1,50,000. Yes, all of you. 1,50,000 divided by my equivalent units. What is equivalent units here? 20,000 is 65% complete, correct? So the w, uh, WIP is what? Divya Deepa? 20,000 into 65 percent 13,000 is my WIP units. Next, finished goods given in the question is 12,000 units, correct? This is my closing stock. Cost of sales for the cost of goods sold, that is units sold is 50,000 units. Correct, Pavan? 50,000 units. So add all of these three, 13 plus 12 plus 50, 75,000. Yes? So this 75,000, when I divide it by 1,50,000, rupees 2 is the supplementary rate. I multiply it into respective things, and then this is what I get. Same way, whatever it is that I debit it here. Working progress control account debit, then finished goods control account debit, cost of sales account debit, Costing pay under account that is one lakh of abnormal because of inefficiency. Yes, they just finish. It is because of inefficiency. Same thing I debit. And what do I credit? Anaga, I credit overhead control account. Credit overhead control account. Clear. All of you understood? Yes, Kanisha. Clear? Any doubts? Simple. Everything. So now who says that C exam is difficult? Who come on? Anybody who can tell me that is difficult? This is your recent question paper. I picked up and I'm showing you guys. Yes. Recent question paper picked up. Any any problem that we have not solved in the class, all same problem has come. Exact same. You why can't you guys score out of out? Can't you now? Don't you have the confidence that you can score 100? Yes. Start of the class, sir, would have told 100 on 100 you can score and you would have thought not. But now don't you think it is possible? Yes. Whether you do it or not is different, but at least all of you can aim at it, yes or no. Same problem has come. Any different adjustment till now? Yes. Whatever I discussed, no, that was an RTP adjustment. But at least a question paper, whatever we discussed is simple. Material, labor and over it's all simple. 20 mark we discussed. All 20 on 20, all of you can score. Yes. Yes. Tomorrow, next by Thursday, all of by the end of the session, all of you should be confident of scoring 100 on 100. Okay. Because costing almost entirely we have completed actually. Only three chapters are pending. So that to service costing, I've started. Service costing, contract costing, and joint products. That's it. Everything else is. I think cost bookkeeping also almost done. Yes. Arda chapter Irbe Kaste. All right. I think with that, this is uh, 946. You want me to continue with ABC? No. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, don't worry. I'll do it in the next class. No, no problem. Activity based costing. So I have only three chapters left from mine. Activity based costing, margin costing, and budgetary control. Right. Next, I think probably first one hour I'll do and close it, and then I'll pass it on to Shatisar. Or I will do first hour, first one hour, or he'll do first one hour. I don't know. Depends on Shatisar schedule. Nivella or Shatisar Ramel Bartar and Tamil join again. I'll know the Amel. Based on his schedule, he will come first half, second half. I don't know that. Who is starting what? So you guys better much con bunny. Okay. All of you. Clear? All right. This material will share it with you guys. Don't worry. Okay. I think uh, by tomorrow only. So you revise and then you guys can solve. So whatever I've done now till now for your reference is May 22 RTP problems and suggested answers of December 21. Your latest question paper and latest RTP. Yes. Simple. And that too chapter wise. Ashtay. So if you want to note down the question number reference, it is there in YouTube, you can check, but anyway, question number reference of your RTP is very simple. It is chapter wise only. Your uh, For your suggested answer, question number reference is material chapter is question 1A. Okay. Question 1A is material chapter. Your employee cost question number reference is question 1C. Okay. And uh, over at this question 5B. Over at this question 5B. 1A, 1B, and 5B. A step. Clear? All right? Okay. All right. That's it, guys. Thank you so much. All of you. Okay.
i hope that you guys are more confident now with costing yes all of you is more confident in the costing it's not that you guys forget yes in marto ita everything just have to revise in 3 hours 3 chapters is done 3 hours 3 chapters are done and in one day entire subject you can finish yes one day entire subject is why only two months of course study on one day you finish it off no yes okay anyway you have all the problems and all you keep solving and all the best to all of you guys okay bye enjoy thank you, thank you sir thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.